Hello, I'm Carly Smith with a special report on the proceedings of the Constitutional Convention. I'm here today gathering statements from... I will be here all day gathering statements and thoughts from some of the people at the convention. The Constitutional Convention is taking place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, summer of 1787, and we will be covering the opinions and facts of the convention. Federalists and Anti-Federalists from the 13 colonies will be gathered here at the Independence Hall discussing the Constitution. Now to Hayworth Hill, who will be talking to Governor Morris, representative of New York, getting the inside scoop. Governor Morris, Governor Morris! Fuck it! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You have time what? for a question. Does it look like I have time for a question? Yes, I have time for a question. God. What type of central government do you think we should have? I agree with the government, in fact, that we should have a constitution. My main concern is that the, wit the rich will strive to establish their dominion and enslave the rest. They always did. They always will. They will have the same effect here as elsewhere, if we do not, by the power of the government, keep them in their proper spheres. And that is why I support crafting an entirely new constitution and government. What is your stand on the constitution? <laughs> um, I agree with everything I wrote, duh. Uh, what part did you write? Well, I'm just finishing the touches on the preamble. I, I plan on speaking a lot at the Constitutional Convention. Actually, I've been speaking the most. I'm very proud of it. I came from New York to take part in the Constitutional Convention. This is not my first time in politics. I'm a senator back in New York. But I came here because Pennsylvania is where I was born. I think my opinion influenced almost all of it. Wow, I'm great. The magistrate is not the king, the people are. You know who else is great? Okay, well that's enough from Governor Morris. And now we go to James Foster who has caught up with William Patterson. James Foster. Three, two, one. Excuse me! Sir, sir. Does it look like- Do you have time for a couple of questions? Does it look like I have time for questions? I think it does. I heard that you wrote the New Jersey plan. What is it? Uh, it is a proposal for the structure of the U.S. government. It, is in it includes things like amending the Articles of Confederation and allowing the Congress in to enforce tax. Okay, Santa. <laughs> Why did you write the New Jersey plan? Because I disagree with the original document, and I thought it would be that a more federalist government would be better. Do you think that the president has the power to start war? Does he possess the power of making war? That power is exclusively vested in Congress. It is the exclusive province of Congress to exchange a state of peace into a state of war. In your eyes, what is the Constitution? It is the form of government delineated by the mighty hand of the people, in which certain pr first principles of fundamental law are established. The, con the Constitution is certain and fixed. It contains the permanent will of the people and is the supreme law of the land. And lastly, why did you leave Independence Hall before you came back to sign it? I prefer not to talk about that. But oh, sir. G go, go away. No, sir! 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 I'm sorry! Sir, I'm please! Sorry. I'm, I'm begging you! <laughs> Hello, James Madison. Hello, Carly. Why did you create the Virginia plan? I created the Virginia plan for many reasons. Also, it was completely unfair for the bigger states um, with more people than the ones with just lower states. I mean, the bigger states and the lower states all just get one vote. So based on the population of the states, more, uh, more population should have more than one vote than less. Why are the checks and balances so important to the Constitution? The checks and balances are really important because they balance out the federal government. So none of the three branches have too much power. What will other people think of the Constitution? Every man who loves peace, every man who loves his country, every man who loves liberty ought to have it ever before his eyes that he may cherish in his heart a due attachment to the Union of America and be able to set a due value on the means of preserving it. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Madison. Nice to meet you, Carly. And we're all. You have time for a couple questions. Yes, I do. Uh, okay, how do you like being the state representative for uh, New York? There are certain enthusiasm and liberty that makes human nature rise above itself in acts of bravery and heroism. It's not tyranny we desire, it's just a limited federal government. A fondness for power is implanted in most men, and it's natural to abuse it. One acquired. 
Uh, what is your thought of the branches of government and how should it be handled? Well, power over a man's sub subsistence is power over his will. And frame <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the framing of the government, which is to be administrated by man over men, the great difficulty it lies in this: you must first enable the government to control the governed, and in the next place, oblige it to control itself. Okay. How do you feel about the constitution? Well, I feel men oppose often oppose a thing merely because they have no agency in planning it. The sacred rights of mankind are not to be rummaged for among old parchments or musty records. They are written as a sunbeam in the whole volume of the human nature by the hand of the divinity itself and can never be erased. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Henry. Good afternoon. Who do you think will be able to take advantage of the Constitution? I believe that the Constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the people is an instrument for the people to restrain the government. Least it come to dominate our lives and interests. Does the secrecy of the convention concern you? Yes, very much so. I believe that hiding the Constitution is not right. I believe that they shouldn't be more open to the public. A small rat in Philadelphia tending towards the monarchy. What do you think about how America has progressed since it was first founded? I believe that when the American spirit was in its youth, the language of America was different. Liberty Man was the primary object. Thank you for your time. Roger Sherman, Roger Sherman. Oh, oh yes. You, you have time for some questions. I do. All right. Were you involved in writing the Constitution? I was not, but I, I do plan on signing it. I also plan on signing the Declaration of Independence and the Articles of Confederation. Do you think that your rights are secure? The only real security that you can have for all your important rights must be in the nature of your government. If you suffer any man to govern you is not strongly interested in supporting your privileges, you will certainly lose them. Uh, what rights do you think that the, that the uh, Christians possess? All civil rights and the right to hold office or to be extended to persons of any Christian dem demonition. No, it's good. go. Oh. What do you think the What do you think of the fail of the Articles of Confederation? I think that it was okay that it failed because they never gave the government enough power. Why did you create the Conne Connecticut Compromise? I created it because I thought every state needs to have a fair say in debates, like since Texas, let's say. They can't, they'll overpower everybody because it's bigger than most states. True. Nice to you, Mr. Mason. Nice to see you too. Your name is? Carly. Carly Smith. <laughs> I'm glad to have you here today with us. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> it is known that you are a well-known abolitionist. Do you feel the improved Articles of Confederation will abolish slavery for good? I hope so but to disarm the person is the most effectual way to arm a person. I spend my whole public life trying to stop slavery. This constitution isn't going to stop slave, the slave trade. The slave trade needs to end. We came equals into this world, and equals, we shall come out. <laughs> the constitution is in the process now. Do you think it is perfect? Absolutely not. The constitution protects slavery. It protects the three-fifths compromise, the slave trade clause, and the fugitive slave tr clause. <laughs> that slow poison, slavery, is daily contaminating the minds and morals of our people. Every gentleman is born a petty tyrant, practiced in acts of de disposition, a cruelty. Good to know. I thought you did not agree with the Constitution. Why did you sign it? Hmm, that is an excellent question. Oh, how easy it is to persuade to sign anything by which they won't be affected. What can I say? They persuaded me to sign it, and I regret signing the Constitution. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Have a nice day. Thank you. Now, hello. I am Carly Smith, trying to get an exclusive interview from Elbridge Jerry. Oh, look, there he is. Jerry, one question. What is it? Did you or did you not sign the Constitution? I did not sign the Constitution. Why? It did not have a Bill of Rights, and that made me very upset. Thank you for your time, Elbridge, Jerry. <laughs> You're welcome. Carly. Carly Smith. James Wilson, James Wilson, I have a couple of questions for you. Why do you think of having slaves be three-fifths of a person? It seemed to be a good compromise. 
Some people want to save to be more equal to normal people. Some people want saves to be with nothing. So three-fifths seem to be about right. More than nothing and less than any normal person. Interesting. What was your pamphlet, Considerations on the Nature and Extent of the Legislative Authority of the British Parliament about? On the resolution of this question and on the measures with which a resolution of it will direct, it will depend whether the parent country, like a happy mother, shall behold her children flourish around her and receive the most grateful returns for protection and love, or whether, like a stepdame rendered miserable by her own unkind conduct, she shall see their affections alienated and herself deprived of those advantages which a milder treatment would have ensured her. That was pretty deep. So you're pretty good at speeches. <gasps> I was one of the best speech writers at the Constitutional Convention. You don't seem you don't seem so well now. It was over two hundred years ago, you schmuck. Hello, Ben Franklin. Hello. Hello. Carly. Yeah. Carly Smith. Oh, I'm so sorry. Now, right on with the questions. What do you think the people will get out of the Constitution? The U.S. Constitution doesn't guarantee happiness, only the pursuit of it. You have to catch up with it yourself. Accurate. Do you believe that this new Constitution will give the federal government too much power and restrict the freedom of the people? Well, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become more corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. What is your opinion on the Constitution? Are you behind it or against it? I confess there are several parts of this Constitution which I do not at present approve. But I am sure I shall never approve them. I have lived long. I have experienced many instances of being obliged by better information or fuller consideration to change opinions even on important subjects, which I once thought right, but found to be otherwise. <coughs> what do you find is the most important idea that the Constitution is defending? It is a common observation here that our cause is the cause of all mankind, and that we are fighting for their liberty in defending our own. Where liberty dwells, there is my country. How will the new government provide the people security without jeopardizing their liberty? Any society that would give up a little liberty to gain a little security will deserve neither and lose both. Nice to meet you, Ben Franklin. You as well, Carly. Jay, John Jay, John Jay! Do you have time for a couple of questions? Uh, yeah, sure. What do you want to know? Well, first off, even though you did not attend the Constitutional Convention, how do you feel about the Constitution? I believe that I can solve most of America's political problems, so a couple of people, such as Alexander Hamilton, James Madison and myself wrote a series of articles called the Federalist Papers, showing Americans that proving the Constitution will do that. What bothers you most about the Constitution, Jay? America belongs to we the people. It does not belong to the Congress. It does not belong to special interest groups. It does not belong to the courts. It belongs to we the people. How do you feel about slaves and them being three-fifths of a man? Slaves held by the laws of men are free by the law of God. Thank you for talking with us, Jack. Thank you. Your hands are very cold, Mr. Washington. I guess I have pneumonia. Oh. <laughs> okay. Here we are, Mount Vernon, home of George Washington. Do you feel obliged to sign the Constitution, Mr. Washington? It is my belief that happiness and moral duty are inseparably connected. Signing this document is my moral duty and will therefore make me happy. Happiness aside, how strongly do you follow the Constitution? The Constitution is the guide that I shall never abandon. Could you clarify the document's purpose? The Constitution vests the power of demanding war on Congress. Therefore, no offensive expedition of importance can be undertaken until after they shall have deliberated upon the subject and authorized such a measure. The people fear that this new country will become another Britain. How do you plan to fight corruption? No compact among men can be, be pronounced everlasting and invaluable. And if I may so express myself, that no wall of words, that no mound of parchment can be formed as to stand against the sweeping torrent of boundless ambition on the one side, aided by the sapping of current of corrupted morals on the other. As president, do you feel you would honorably serve the country? Every post is honorable in which a man can serve his country. Thank you for your time, Mr. Washington. Thank you.
George Washington would become the first president of the United States of America. Washington would go on and be like everybody else because he was a strong leader. The people even wanted him to serve another term at president. I didn't want to because he wanted someone else to be president. He soon died a year after his last term in office, and he was buried at his home in Mount Vernon in Virginia. His face is now on the $1 bill. Benjamin Franklin suffered from any illnesses and was almost blind during the Constitutional Convention and was rarely seen in public after the signing. He also suffered soon after from obesity. Alexander Hamilton was a, be our first U.S. Secretary of S S Treasury. We will force taxes on crops and goods before he will be the Secretary of 1789. He was appointed as Secretary of Treasury by George Washington and leave and he will leave office in 1795, and he would die in between 1800 and 1805, and he will die in a duel between two politicians. George Mason was a politician and will die in 1792. He will conceive the Bill of Rights in 1789, and he will be part of coming up with the Ten Amendments. He will be part of, of office as a politician in a few years to come. James Madison became the fourth president of the United States of America from 1809 to 1817. He, be he became known as the father of the Constitution. He was also considered the father of the Bill of Rights. James Madison did live a long life, considering he was 85 when he passed away. He was buried in Montpelier, Virginia. Roger Sherman, the man behind the critical Connecticut Compromise, was said to be deeply admired by Adams, Jefferson, and Madison. He died of typhoid on, on July 1793 at the age of 72. He served as a U.S. Senator for Connecticut at the time. New Hampshire would be the last state to ratify the Constitution, making it law. The first state to ratify the Constitution was Delaware. After that followed Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, and Connecticut. Other states, like Massachusetts, opposed the document, as it didn't give enough power to the states themselves. They agreed that if there would be amendments immediately afterward. They agreed to sign it on the condition that there would be amendments immediately afterwards. The Bill of Rights will be passed by Congress in 1789, ratified by three-fourths of the states in 1791. It will be written by James Madison and George Mason, who wrote the first ten amendments. These are the Bill of Rights. There were tw originally 12 amendments, but two of them were, ratified, were not ratified by the states. One of two missing amendments would eventually be ratified 203 years later as the 27th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution.